Hello, I am Wander001, and this is my review of the Coleman Road Trip Sport Propane. Uh, this is an older model of the Road Trip Portable Grill. Uh, there are newer models out, but this is an older version. Uh, I got it primarily because it was on sale. Uh, so recently we had the 4th of July holiday in the U.S., and well, it's a big grilling holiday, so about a month before uh, 4th of July here. They had a really good sale on this at one of my stores, uh, which didn't have it in stock at the time, but Amazon had the same price for it, so I got it there. Uh, what you're looking at is, again, a propane uh, portable grill. So it's really good for if you're like me and live in a condominium, uh, even though they say you're not supposed to have propane grills uh, and only gas, it's small enough that nobody really notices. Uh, so what you're looking at is up here, the, the top, and you'll have to forgive me because I'm trying to freehand this, uh, so no tripod set up out here, and you may see my notes popping in and out of frame. You're looking at a length up here at the top of 12 inches, and a width from side to side of 19. Now it does have a variable height uh, up to 27 inches, a little bit more depending on uh, how you assemble it uh, because there are several spots on the legs which I'll show you that you can uh, choose the height of this particular grill. Uh, in fact, why don't we start from the bottom and work our way up. So the grill itself does not come pre-assembled. You do have to assemble it yourself. There are no tools included, which was a little bit disconcerting, but not terrible. As you can see, there are plastic wheels in the back there, so easy transport, and everything that has a metal surface is coated, so it is rust resistant. You'll notice up under here, there is a grease drip pan. Now, a lot of the pictures was difficult for me to tell if this was plastic or metal. Well, obviously you don't want a plastic drip pan. So, this actually is a metal drip pan, and as you can see, there are remnants of uh, our grilling on the 4th of July. So yes, this is a metal drip pan so you don't have to worry about burning a hole in a plastic one. Up front here you have a latch, which is how you close it so that you can drop it down. Uh, here, a lot of people, including my friend who also has a similar, actually the exact same model of this, wanted to know what this is. It's a, a match light, so you put a match at the tip here, and in case the starter over here doesn't work, you put a match in put it in there and you're good to go. So to drop down the uh, portable grill here, easiest way to do it is to just step you know, one foot there with it locked, grabbing the handle, and tilt it forward and that little piece there comes forward. Now I'm not going to drop it down all the way because like I said I'm freehanding this and it's a little difficult working around uh, as it is without dropping it down and trying to bring it up one-handed. You can, but uh, I'm trying not to. If, if you want a video with it flattened down, just let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to do that. So why don't we come up to the front and we're going to unlatch it. So again, that is coated metal. The handle here is plastic, but far enough away from the grill uh, that it will get a little warm, but it's not terribly warm. And that is one of the reasons I ended up going with this as opposed to one of the newer models. The newer models, the handle is much smaller and closer to the grill surface. And the grill surface up here is all metal. So that gets really, really hot. As well as if we come down here, and sorry for the dog barking in the background, you'll notice that there is a nice bit. So here's your grilling area and then the lid up here. You'll notice that there's a nice bit of height uh, between where the grill surface and the lid is. The newer ones, it's really small, and I was concerned that that would get really hot really quickly and just didn't want to deal with that. So what you're looking at is a single uh, burner. Control dial pretty much consists of low, medium, and high with your starter. And like I said, this is a propane grill, so it does use propane fuel. Here is the uh, canister. You go with a 16.4 ounce or, or the one pounder. Uh, they recommend this one, but you don't have to. Uh, they had these on sale, so I picked up a couple. If you don't want to use the little canisters, you can get a big uh, propane tank and just have a connection tube to it. Uh, 
in my particular situation it doesn't work well like that because you can't really hide that uh, cylinder I can take off and put back on as needed. The only problem with the cylinders are they are not, re you cannot refill them. So it's either you buy them and you properly dispose of them. Uh, Buddy, like I said, has the same exact grill as this. He was able to get pretty much a whole season out of one canister, but it all depends on how much you actually grill. Uh, so here, you can see the Coleman badge on the top. Now this is a heat proof badge because this gets hot up here, but you can see a little bit of uh, black where my wife decided to lay a spatula handle and it melted a little bit. So what we're going to do now is open it up. So here you're looking at a grilling surface of 225 square inches with a BTU output of 11,000. Now this is Again, the older version, which only has a single burner, as opposed to the newer version, which has two burners with a total output of 20,000 BTUs, but only 10,000 per burner. So if you look at it this way, for a single burner, you actually get more off of this one than the newer version. You uh, don't quite have the control of two separate uh, heating areas, but for a slightly cheaper price and slightly less grilling surface, I'll take this over the uh, more expensive and longer one. Uh, this one also doesn't come with uh, side accoutrement like the other one does, so you can put stuff on it. Uh, it's just, this is the grill and this is the grill. Uh, you do have a removable grill surface, which is supposed to be dishwasher safe. Uh, in there you can kind of see, well, didn't really clean this after our uh, last grilling adventure, which I will, you know, put in some, you know, footage from when we did some grilling. All right, you can flip them. Um, so I didn't clean off the grill from the last time, we just did some kibasi. Uh But in there, that, that mess is the equivalent of like four or five burgers, uh, six hot dogs, and then a kibasi. So one of the things is this is supposed to be a portable road trip grill. So you want to keep in mind that uh, you may want to put some tin foil down there because it is going to take a little bit of time for the grease to, uh, to solidify. But if uh, you're waiting for the grill to cool down anyway it might not be as bad but if I'm going to be sticking this in the back of my car I want to have some liner in there so I can just pull the liner out when it's cold cool enough and throw that out as opposed to waiting for everything to solidify but in the case of me it sits on my deck and I don't really have to worry about it so we're going to come up here and show you the top of it and that's just uh, grease splattered from all the uh, fun uh, one of the other things while I think about it that I like about this one as opposed to the newer version, the newer version, these um, spacers here to protect the burner areas is much larger than uh, this one. So instead of being like this big, they're, they're much wider. And I didn't quite like that because it, it's a pain in the butt to clean something when it's in between the slots. In, in my opinion, you may have a different opinion about that, and that's your opinion. This is my opinion. Um, but. So for me, this this is what works. And we're gonna close this up and just take a quick, quick little walk around, come down here, just so you get a general idea. And there's your back with your hinges and the vents. And again, 
since this is on my deck, I don't have a lot of room to walk around it because I moved it so that it would look uh, better for filming. Uh, so again, uh, the primary reason I got this, it was on sale. My buddy got uh, one exactly like it. Had it for an entire season outdoors, uh, you know, through the harsh winter we had back in 2014 to 2015, and never covered it up. So snow, rain, all that. The most uh, damage that you could see is a little bit of rust, rust forming here. A little WD-40 and a Brillo pad will take care of that. So, I mean, for a condo dweller or tailgater or whatever you're looking at this for, uh, you know, it, it's an ideal little grill. Price-wise, you're looking anywhere from between $120 to, I got this on sale like a month and a half before the actual grilling season for the U.S. Uh, for $89. So if you keep your eyes open, you can get this for a really good price. And it is going to last you for, at least what I can tell uh, currently, you know, with no real hassles. I have been Wanderer001. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the area below. And thanks for watching.